Hi there, Darren at Protopilot here, and today I'm gonna show you how to build a login, an app login, using Protopy's native input fields and text capabilities. So let me show you what we're gonna be building. Okay, so we've got a single input field. We're gonna give the ability for the user to type in a value into that field and then we're going to transfer the user using a custom transition to the second screen. And then we're going to print the what they typed in the text field in this header at the top of the screen. So let's kind of see how we can kind of put this together. It's really simple. It's the first um, video dealing with input fields. I'm gonna be doing a whole bunch of these. So let's get cracking. Okay, so that's, let's have a look around this file. So this is my starter file that I'm using. So we're going to be building this all inside of one scene. You can see over here, I've got two groups. I've got a login group, which is my graphics for, for this, this screen that you can see here right now. And then underneath, I've got this view group, which is going to be my second screen. So if I just turn, I just turn this login group off so you can see my screen, my view screen underneath. And I want to draw your attention to some items inside of these groups. So for login, we're interested in the input. So this is an input component inside of Protopie. So you access this from the text menu. So you can just bring another input field out and you can see here I've just styled my input to look like a like a native a native app input, which you can you can do just by affecting messing around with these values over here in your context panel. But just to speed things up, I've already recreated this. So that's that's the first important um, field that we're going to be dealing with. And then in the view group, we've got this message. Let me just turn off the login. So this message text label. So you can see here, I've just got some placeholder text inside of here. And this is where we're going to be passing our name. So the value that we type into our input field, we're going to be passing into this text field. We're going to do a custom transition as well. That's kind of superfluous to the input field functionality, but I thought it'd be nice just to kind of round it off with a with a bit of custom transition work, just to give you another another way of doing transitions. And also, like I said, we're going to be a single scene. There'll be a future video where I'm going to be looking at how you do this between scenes, which is a little bit more advanced. So I just wanted to give you the basics get those under, under your hat so you know what you're doing and then from then on we can we can take we can we can look at some more advanced things okay so the first thing we want to do is we want to let's just have a quick look at the preview so as it stands i can straight out of the box i can tap on this input field i haven't added anything special to it this is just kind of what you get out of the box and how it works i can I can type anything in here. It's worth noting that when you're in the preview window, you can see this keyboard on screen, but you don't actually tap on this keyboard on the screen. It doesn't work in the preview window. If you was pushing this down to a real a real device that you've got connected to Protopie, then obviously you can type on the real, the real app um, keyboard that you get on your device. But from preview, we need to use our real keyboard. There's a keyboard attached to our computer to do the typing. So that's what you'll be using. But obviously it doesn't do anything. I can just type in, press return. That just dismisses the keyboard. Okay, so we're gonna look at a couple of different ways of connecting this up. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna use this button that I've got here. Um, so we're gonna add a tap trigger. So having my button selected already means it's already selected over here. So that's good. And I'm going to basically add 
a text response. Okay, so this is going to be the, the part where we we move the text from the input field into the text label. So we're going to want to select our text label. So that's message. And if you remember, that's the, the text label that sits in the second group. And we're going to be changing the content from text to formula. Now, we leaving it as text means you can just type anything in here. That's obviously not dynamic. That's not that's not grabbing the value from the from the input field. So that's no that's no good to us in this in this particular instance. That's why we need formula. So we're going to choose formula, and if we select in this field, you'll see the FX icon. So we're going to tap that, and we're going to want to grab the value from the input field. So if I hit this plus button, and I find my input field. Here it is. Okay, so I've selected the target, which is my input field. You can see Protopie instantly pops up this second box, and this shows me all of the different properties that I can have access to on the input field. And we need a very special one that comes with the input field, and that's the text property. So that's going to give me the value that the user types into the text field. It's going to give me access to that. So I'm going to click OK. We need to switch screens between the two between the two views. So what we're going to do is we're just going to add a opacity. And we're just going to get our logging group. So that's our top group. And we're going to make the opacity 0. Duration of two is OK. So that will reveal the the second group, which is our second view underneath, and enable us to see if we successfully pass the text property from the input field to the label. So let's run that. Actually, we'll press preview. If we type in here, type a value, and hit return. So return at the moment just dismisses the keyboard. And if you remember, we actually connected the value to the next button. So if we press the next button, We've now transitioned to the second screen and you can see that the value we typed in the input field has successfully been transferred into the label. So that's good. That's all working. But it's a little bit, I don't know what you feel about it. It's a little bit, I'm a bit labored. Like I've got to type in here and then I hit return or in this case, go on the keyboard, which just dismisses the keyboard and I've got to press this set, this, this button. So a bit too many taps. So what we can do is we can actually add this functionality to the, the keyboard itself, the return key of the keyboard. So let's add a different trigger to see what this looks like. So we've got a return response under the input menu. And we're going to choose, so it, Return only works directly with input fields. Obviously, you had a lot of input fields. You see a whole list here. So we've only got one. So we're going to select input. And we're just going to copy these two responses. And we're just going to paste them in, in return. And we're also just going to turn tap off. So we can just turn this whole trigger off just by, by, by hitting the switch. That, effect, that effectively disables it. If we now go back to our preview, try this again. And this time we're going to hit return. Okay, so now return dismisses the keyboard and it transfers us to the second view. But I don't know what you think about this. This is, we're just passing the straight value. It's not very personal. It'd be nice to wrap a, a kind of bit more of a personalized message around this label. So, so we can do that. So let's have a look at how we do that. So coming back to our formula here, so we're literally just grabbing the value, but we can we can wrap some some other text around this. So if you put your cursor right at the beginning, and you want to tap a double quote, and we're going to tap a message. So we're going to say, "Welcome," 
and we're going to close the quote. And now we need to add a plus between the two. And let's try that. Type our name, hit return. Great, so now we've got welcome Darren, but you can see there's, there's a space missing. So we just need to add that space in. So what we do is we just add that inside of the, the custom text in our quote mark. So we can just add a space there and that will that will add that in. Preview again. And now you can see we've got a nicely formatted message. So that's the basics. That's the basics of how to take some text input from an input field and put it into a label. In the next segment, we're going to look at how we add that custom transition. Okay, so let's have a look at how we might add a custom transition, a simple custom transition to this. So what we're going to do is we're going to, just going to have our top login screen, we're going to have this moving, animating off to the side like this. And then we're just going to, we're just going to pop the view underneath using a bit of scale just to bring that into view. So the first thing we need to do is to animate this, this screen. So you can, You'll have to kind of like, if you want to get the exact value like I have, you kind of have to move it into the position you want it to be just to kind of see the value. So we can see here it's minus 376, but I do remember to put it back. Back to the beginning, so set that to zero. So we're going to, on our return trigger, we're going to add a move. And we're going to select our login group. And we want it to move to that value, which was minus 376. Okay, and I'm going to use an ease out animation curve. That just means it will it will instantly start moving and go from from instantly moving and start to slow down as it as it goes off screen. And I'm going to leave that, actually, no, I'm going to change that to 0 0.4. So a preview of that. Okay. We see that we've got this opacity, we can remove this opacity now because we've got the move transition. Okay, so that's the first half of our of our transition. For the the second the second half, so the view itself. So I just want this view to kind of just scale up a little bit. So because of the way scaling works, I can't just just kind of scale it manually like this. You can see it goes crazy. So I need to actually animate it to the initial state first. And so that I can then animate it back up again. So I want to animate it down to just 10% smaller than it currently is. So then I can animate it back up 10%. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to, we're going to use a start trigger and we're going to select our view and we're going to set scale. And we're going to set it to a factor and we're going to change that to 90. Now we want, this is just kind of set it into the initial position. So we don't, we don't want to see its animation. So we're going to set the duration to zero. And actually we're going to set the start to be start with jumps, which basically means it will render it in the, it will render the animation before we even see anything on screen, which we don't obviously want to see. Okay. So that's kind of put it into the, the kind of initial state. If we just quickly preview this, you can see, in fact, let's just turn our login back on.
and you can see this is set to a scale position you can see that the tab bar is slightly inset okay that's good okay so that's set it to the initial position now we want to animate it up so we want to set so because we've used an animation inside a protopy to to transform a property we can use a really handy a response called reset and what that basically does is it resets the an object back to its original state before before any animations or anything has run um, so we're essentially going to use that to reverse the animation for our scale so we're going to use reset and we're going to choose the view and again we want this to ease out and we're actually going to delay this slightly as well. So we're going to keep the duration to two and we're going to delay it so that basically our move animation is going to move by 0.4. So when it gets halfway through that animation, that's when this animation is going to trigger. And because it's going to trigger halfway through, we just want it to be slightly shorter. We can see how that, how that looks. You can obviously tweak these values till you've got something that you like. So let's have a look at that. So type value in. Okay, so we've got our custom transition. We've got our scale sliding off. I might just remove the delay. Let's just see what that looks like. So you can set it to zero. Preview again. Yeah, I kind of like that. I think that's kind of a little bit more connected, a little bit more fluid. You just get enough of a sense of animation that something's changed. So we've now built a custom transition. So this is just one of the ways you can build in custom transitions into, into Protopy uh, between two, two screens. We've done all this all in one scene and we've enabled the movement of a value from an input field to a label. So this is kind of the simplest way you can kind of do this sort of stuff. So hope you enjoyed that. In the next video, I'm going to be looking at doing something a bit more advanced by doing the same input manipulation, but we're going to be doing this between scenes. So hopefully see you there. Um, if you want to get these videos as and when they come out, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hopefully I'll see you next time.